But we have one third of the Mean Street Posse, Pete Gas. Pete, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, it could be doing better. I wish we were speaking on different terms. Of course, you know, we are here mourning the loss or celebrating the life that was Lance Cade, so to say. And uh, we've got a couple of questions for you, so if you don't mind, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. It's just really sad to see I lost another uh, good friend of mine. Yeah, you know, they're, they're falling way too young. Of course, you know, he passed away before even he hit 30. Um, you know, and, and my first question for you is, um, being that you knew Lance Cade, what would you, uh, what would you say that he wanted the fans to remember him most for? I just think that he, he was the type of guy that wanted to be, be known for his work ethic. I mean, he was a, he was a hard worker. And I, ever since he was 19 years old and he came into Memphis, I remember his, his first day there. I looked at this kid and I was like, wow, you know, he's got, he's got all the, all the physical tools that he needed. And, uh, you know, he looked, to me, he looked like a young Bradshaw ready to come up. And, you know, he has that same body type. And, and, uh, you know, he was, he was physical and he was a great athlete. And I think that's what he wanted people to remember him by. And I wish, I, I wish he got to show people what he really was made of and, and became a, a high profile guy because he had all the physical tools to do that. Yeah, I remember actually seeing him uh, before he even made WWE TV. He was on the road, and it was one of the first times WWE actually came back to Portland, Oregon, after they had lifted the band, and he was here as Ga- uh, Garrison Cade. And I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, so I mean, there's no doubt. He, he was, the, the ability he had, he could, he could jump through the roof. I mean, he was a six, six five, six six. I don't know his exact height. I know he's taller than me. Um, just a big, big kid with a... With a, with a love for, and a passion for, for wrestling and and just admired the hell out of Shawn Michaels and always talked him up. And he was obviously he was one of uh, Shawn's first students and couldn't say enough good things about Shawn. And I mean, just he had a lot of positive energy in him. And it was, it, it was a pleasure to be around. Now, you know, you, you seem to have a lot of fond memories of him. What is one thing that's gonna, that you're going to hold dear in your heart the rest of your time? <laughs> I got. I have, as usual, I have a good story. Um, one one of the times we had a road trip for uh, MCW Memphis Championship Wrestling. We were down in Memphis, and uh, we had a road trip. We're down in Louisiana, and and I decided that I was going to play a prank on on Lance because Lance and I had a good relationship, and I thought I'd rhythm and, and play this prank on him. So what I did was I had my bag and. I, I asked him to go get my can of tobacco out of the bag. And he went and got it for me. And then I went and buzzed Terry Golden, who was running MCW at the time. I said, listen, I'm going to play a rip on Lance. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to start making a stink that my wallet stole. So with this, I go through the whole ass. I'm, I'm, I'm ranting and raving, saying that we're supposed to be a family in this locker room. Who the F took my, my wallet? Someone, someone better just fess up and just give it back. And I won't press charges. So I'm going through this whole rant. <clears throat> About 20 minutes later, Terry Golden grabs Lance and pulls him into a, 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 another locker room that no one does. And in there, we had gotten three security guards, or three police officers. And so Lance walks in, and he, he doesn't know what to do. And it's me, the police officers, Terry Golden, and Lance. And uh, Terry, Terry starts talking to him about my wallet. And I just turned to him, and I said, hey, Lance. Just give me the fucking wallet. We all know you took it. You were in my bag, blah, blah, blah. And you know, we were supposed to be a family. So I, I start ranting and raving, and I go into the lot, into the bathroom, or the bathroom, and I'm trying hard not to laugh. I'm trying, I'm trying to keep a straight face the best I can. So then he's trying to state his case and the whole thing, and I, I come back out, and I'm like, you know, I thought we were friends. I can't believe this. If you needed money that bad, you could have came to me. I would have gave it to you. But like, you were going through this whole thing. So finally, the police officers, you know, I mean, this is going on for like 15, 20 minutes. And he's trying to plead his case. So he, he, the police kid, they go and, and the, the cops decide it's time to cuff him. So they start grabbing him, put their hands behind their head, and he goes into a panic and, and he just he lets out a scream. Carrie, Carrie, I'm being set up! And, and it was just like, as, it was, as soon as he yelled that, like, as, no one can hold the back anymore. The five of us started cracking up laughing. And all I could do is give the kid a hug. He, I waited for the longest time for him to get me back on this rib, and he just he wouldn't he 
he never got me back. I thought he was going to do it immediately, but he never did. But he was that type of kid. He just he went along with it. He wouldn't. He would never do something like that. It was just it just made it more fun. But he was the type of guy you can joke around with. And it was one of my, one of my dear moments for him. That's a funny story. Now, if you were to write a book about Lance's life, what would the title be? Wow, this is a uh, sounds pretty deep. Uh, I just wow. I would say dedicated. That's a good one. He was dedicated. Dedicated to wrestling would be the title because he was. You know, he was a he was a kid that came straight out of high school. He went straight into wrestling. Wrestling was his life. He did. I mean, I remember being at, in, in Memphis, going to schools on. You know, we would have class all day Thursday in the ring and bumping around, and he was always trying to perfect something and, and try to work hard. And he always kept his nose clean, and he was always just—he was dedicated to the sport. He watched tapes for hours and hours, and you know, like I said before, his love for Shawn Michaels, and and he, I mean, when I say he used to talk about it, when and you see you see it in his, in his eyes when when he talked about Shawn, the passion that he had for Shawn, and and how how highly he thought about Shawn Michaels was just, I mean, yeah, it gave me goosebumps just talking about it, how, how he really felt about Shawn and, 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 and actual business itself. Now, my co-host, Anthony Missionary Thomas, has a couple questions. So, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Pete. I actually wanted to know, how did you guys become friends? Like, uh, when did you guys, you know, when was the first time that you guys crossed paths and you guys became friends? It was the summer of, it was the summer of 2000. We, um, I, we had been, the Mutual Posse had been in the business. We, we had been sent to, to Memphis in, in May of, of 2000. And I think shortly after, maybe two months later, it, uh, maybe it was July, I think, um, Brian, uh, Brian Daniels, mm-hmm. he came in, uh, Brian Kendrick and, and Lance. They came, uh, and another guy, uh, his, his name was Tudor Schultz. They all came, the four of them came in from, from Sean's school. And, uh, they had been signed to developmental contracts. And ever since then, I've known, I've known Lance. Um, the last time I saw Lance was at the 15 year anniversary of Raw when I got the honor to do that, uh, up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And, uh, he and I actually spent a lot of time, me and him and Brian, um, spent a lot of time before the doors open. A lot of the guys hang out in the, in the, in the seats where the crowd sits and just talk and, you know, just kind of catch up, and mm-hmm. you know, he introduced me to a bunch of guys, and <clears throat> guys that are current that I hadn't met yet, and he just, you know, it was nice. I mean, so to answer your question, it's been since uh, probably June or July of 2000. Oh. I've known him. Now, I'm, I'm sure, you know, over that time, obviously, many years, um, what was, like, one of the favorite matches of Lance that you saw? And you went, wow, this guy's got talent. I'll be honest with you, the best match I saw with, I mean, I saw the one with him and Sean, which I thought, that meant, it meant a lot to him, I know. I wasn't there for it. So something like that I know was special to his heart. But to be honest with you, I've seen him do matches in, in Memphis that were just he, – he had a match against Joey Ass, which was off the charts. Hmm. And they were they, – they had tables, ladders, chairs, and there was there was blood. There was – I mean, he was he, – his kid, like I said, when I said before, he was, he was dedicated. And, um, you know, he, he loved his family. And uh, – he loved the business, and but to answer your question, yeah, there's a. I guess I, I'd have to say the match with Sean just because I know how much that meant to him because that was his mentor. Right. I guess I'll say that, but like I said, I've seen I've seen matches with him in Memphis, and I've been in matches with him in Memphis, and we and I, I'll, I'll never forget him. He was a, he was a great kid. Yeah, pretty much um, the Shawn Michaels matches obviously is is the highlight of his own personal career. You know, um, I no can doubt. definitely see that. What what kind of impact did Lance Cade have on the people around him? Lance, I mean, what, what you're talking about, I don't know if you're talking about at the WWE or if you're talking about even down in, you know, Jonesboro, Arkansas, where there's, you know, you get these matches where there's some matches in Arkansas. We, we wrestled in front of like six people. Yeah. But he always got a reaction, and he knew how to fire up a crowd if he was a baby face and, and get people to hate him if he was a heel. I mean, he knew... He knew how to work the crowd. He was, like I said, he was a student of it. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's great to, to talk about Lance the wrestler because Lance the wrestler was, he worked hard at it. Yeah. But, you know, now I think 
now that he's gone, I think what we should really be doing is, is talking about Lance the Man because that was that was someone who was special, and he he brought he brought a smile to people's faces in the locker room. He um, you know, he had a family that he loved very much. I know he had been with the, the girl that um, the girl that he was he was currently with when he passed away. He'd been with her, if I'm not mistaken, since since he was 19. Um, wow. He met in San Antonio, so I mean, he he's a, he's a passionate guy. He, you know, he, I know he loves her very much. I hope I'm not making mistakes. I'm pretty sure it's the same girl, unless he married someone else better. Right. So I, I I haven't caught up with him. I didn't get a chance to catch up with him on on that aspect of his life. But um, yeah, but as as a man, he no one no one disliked him. He wasn't the type of kid that you're like, oh, he's a dick. You know, he's he's the type of guy that he's arrogant. Right. You know, he thinks his shit doesn't stink. It wasn't like that with him. He was, he was, a, he was, a, he was a type of guy you respected, and and you liked. He just, he was just that type of guy. What's the one thing that um, you'll miss most about Lance? I just miss. I mean, I would just miss just him, just being able to talk to him, and just being able to, you know, you know, like like I like I said, I was at that, I was at that show in in, uh, in Bridgeport for that reunion. And the first time, as soon as I see him, I, you know, we gave each other a big hug, and we went out into the crowd and started talking, you know, where the crowd sits and started talking, and it was like he never missed a beat. And it was just because, you know, he's he's, a, he's just a down-to-earth guy, and, and you just being able to have conversations with him. And, you know, we would, we told old stories about times down in Memphis and all that and had a bunch of laughs, and, and uh, it was just, yeah, it was just, I mean, I just miss, I would just miss him. As a, as a man, you know, just, just just his personality, I guess. Thank you very much, Pete. Now, now Andrew has a couple questions. So Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, Pete. Um, outside of wrestling, uh, what do you feel was Lance Lance Cade's true passion in life? His family. I know that he he thought very highly of his family. I know that um, I know that he had a stepson that was a real little guy and I mean they, I know his his wife at the, the, the his wife at the time was uh living in San Antonio still so I know his wife was difficult as far as <clears throat> maintaining a relationship and uh, you know as any referee you know has as far as uh, being away from their family for so long but I know that his family meant a lot to him and uh it's 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 sad you know he's he's leaving a lot behind and you know I don't you know, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what happened, but um, it's just it, it, if if it's foul play. I don't know. I, like I don't know if it's something that he took or or what. Or you know, they said it, his heart it had heart failure. Well, something triggered that, and um, you know, I don't want to piss on anyone's grave. I just hope anyone that listens to this, or any any of the boys that listen to this, that if they do have a problem and it turns out that this is what happens with Lance. I don't know. Just wakes up, just realize that we're not Superman. You know, that we are human, and and we, we like to think we are because we can handle a lot of pain and punishment to our bodies. And but eventually, you know, that stuff catches up to you. So I just I just think it is, and to answer your question, I start ranting on these things because it just it really hits home. Because um, now it, since I was in Memphis. Um, we've a bunch of buddies of mine that I'm on Facebook with. We we we, are, we had conversations, and I've had conversations on the phone. This is the fourth guy that we've lost in in, in the last ten years, and uh, it never gets any easier. We were talking about doing a a ten year reunion this this summer, which never went through. I hope we're gonna Charlie Hot. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get this thing organized and we'll, we'll get everyone together. But um, yeah, we're hoping that everyone that was there kind of makes it and makes it, to, you know. It won't survive because it's, it's, it, it gets frustrating, you know. Like <clears throat> there's certain guys that you talk to, and you only talk to them when one of your brothers has fallen, you know. And and it's sad, you know. Like you, I don't know why this, this, this shit happens, or, or I mean, but it's just it's frustrating. Yeah, hopefully you won't lose anymore before you all get a chance to get together. Um, now we all know Lance Cade was more than just a wrestler. Uh, is there a uh, one of, like a favorite uh, personal story about Lance that you're able to share with our listeners? It was just yeah, it was just one that I I was uh, to me it was just, it, yeah, I guess it, it may have had to be one of those things where he had to be there, but it just 
to me, it just shows who Lance was. Lance was so, at the time, he was 19 years old. He was very naive, um, but he was a great kid, and I knew that he'd be able to handle it. And, and I always knew that he was going to make it in this business because he just had, like I said, he had this passion. But as far as that story goes, I just think that um, that was just one that I thought was fun. I mean, he was he was the type of kid like him, um, Brian Kendrick, who, um, and, you know, and, and what's the name? God darn. Um, Daniels, Daniels, he, uh, these guys would never, like, Joey Ass and I would travel to, to a show in Arkansas or whatever, and, and we would always have a cooler of beer, and we'd always, after a match, go out to the truck and have a cool, have a couple beers, and we'd always invite these guys. And these guys would never touch the beer. They were so dedicated to what they were doing. They were they were ready to go home and hang out and get a pizza and, and watch old matches of Shawn Michaels or whoever. And that's 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 what these guys did. And you know they were so innocent at that time. You know, and then I saw how Lance was ten years later, and I was not ten years later, uh, eight, seven, eight years later, and I was like, he's grown up, but he grew up. In a good way, you know, like he was. I'm mean, sure he, he he learned to go out and have a few drinks and do whatever else he used to do. But he uh, he, he never he always cared about his family stuff like that. And I'm just ranting, so you guys got to come up with another question. <laughs> no problem. Um, my final question is: What do you feel that Lance's legacy is? Um, Lance's legacy. Um, I think he just keeps going back to, you know. I think the fact that he was to, to date probably Shawn Michaels' um, most uh, most infamous student, I guess. I, I guess that, you know, like something like that. He, he kind of stands out because you know, I can see it done the most as far as that first class has gone. And um, I just think that, you know, it, I think he never hit his true potential. But I think you know he did do, he did do a lot. He did a hell of a lot more than I ever did, and I do, I think that he's uh, you know he did a lot more than a lot of guys that have done over the years. And I just think that um you know he's he, he's a, he was a special guy, and uh, I guess you know he had he had a bunch of straps over over the years, and probably left a lot more than I ever did. But um, I just think that his legacy to go back his legacy is just of a of a guy that cared and he, a guy that was dedicated to this to this in, industry would be anything. He was I know he was going overseas. He was doing a lot of things like that. He didn't want to leave the business. And um, gosh, I mean, we, we lost we lost a great human being. You know, I mean, we lost a great wrestler, but we lost a great human being. Now, I wanted to thank you for joining us uh, for this tribute. Is there any last thing you'd like to say about or two rants that you never got to say? Yeah, I'm going to try to say this without choking off. Uh, if I had to say anything to the fans, uh, uh, anyone like that who, who never got to meet Lance Cage, um, you, you missed out because this kid was, he was a great kid. And uh, he's a hell of a person with a big heart. And... Uh, I'm gonna miss you, Lance, and uh, I hope I hope you're in a better place. And that's it. Thank you very much for taking time out to do this. No problem. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Pete. Right. Thanks a lot, Pete.